YouTube land and welcome to the Get In and Get Out Nintendo Podcast, episode 22. I am one of your hosts, Dantes, and joining me, Caliones Odyssey himself. Caliones, how you doing, Caliones? Hey, how you doing, Dantes? How you doing, everybody? And uh, well, a lot to talk about this week. Not only uh, do we have our you know, impression Odyssey. about, yes, yeah, sir. about Odyssey, uh, everything that we're doing. Uh, if you look on the background, that's um, actually Upstream uh, Inkling B from Toys and More Club. He's uh, playing the game live. Uh, so you know, he's uh, on the after game and, and fi finding a couple other things. Uh, but he's on that stage, so he's not going to spoil uh, you know the game for you. But uh, we have plenty of news. And even more so, details about how Nintendo, the Switch, and Mario Odyssey itself has done sales-wise. So take it away, Dantes. Killing it! Killing it! Odyssey is killing it. That's the only thing I'm going to say. So, Caleon, a stupid question, but what games have you been playing? Uh, well, uh, you know that um, we said that either this week or the, the week after, we were going to give our reviews of uh, Super Mario Odyssey. So, I mean, I've been playing the game, and, and hopefully... Uh, I'll continue doing it. So uh, what I'll do is I'll do live streams. Uh, so yeah, you know, people, if they want to, they can join in and see uh, where I'm playing on the game. So uh, we'll we'll see that, okay? But we'll continue doing that. You haven't beat the game yet, right? No, I have not. But uh, I've been on and off helping Inkling B with uh, you know doing the the two player mode. So I'll take control of Cappy while he you know while we buy uh, like fight bosses and things like that. So, yeah, just uh, helping them out. So I've seen uh, what the game has to offer, and I cannot wait to you know, do it myself. Okay, yeah, because uh, people can beat, you can beat the game. To clarify, there was a lot of, uh, uh, let me call it, I guess a lot of people hating, hating on the game because the game was too short, right? That people were beating the game in one to two days. That is true. You can beat the game really fast. I know people that have beat the game in two days, right? It's all good. You can. That's fine. Mario has always been that you can beat the game really fast. The fun of the Mario game has always been the post content in the game, right? And that was the case for, I would say, uh, the original Mario, Gal Mario Galaxy, I would say, started that trend of the post content. Because in reality, Mario 64 and Mario Sunshine, it was up to you if you wanted to pick everything as you went through the adventure, right? So, but after that, Mario Galaxy, like to me, Mario Galaxy 2 became the best Mario game after the post content, right? Because how the challenging levels that I faced and trying to get all that stars and then getting Luigi so you can get the green stars too. And there was specialized stars that you could only get with Luigi. So you could change between the two brothers during the game. To me, that made the game even better. That's why I'm a little bit sad that Luigi is not in this game. But we're going to talk about that a little bit more. In today's on Numa's Nintendo discussion. But with that said, Caliones, let's do a rigmarole, shall we? Welcome, everybody, to the Get In, Get Out Nintendo podcast, episode 22, every Saturday, 9.30 Eastern Time. Today is not a live edition. We are recording because this Saturday I will be rocking out with my boys, Guns N' Roses. Uh, but aside from that, we are here to make... A good podcast for you guys, even though it's recorded today. We'll be back live next Saturday. But still, we did. We wanted to have a video for you guys, so we didn't leave you hanging. So we're recording. With that said, please remember to subscribe, like, and comment so you can make this two crazy MS happy. Also, if you don't want to see our ugly faces, it's all good. We got a solution for you. Go to SoundCloud and iTunes and download this podcast for free. Rate us over there so you can show us some love. And finally, Hendantes says, finally, go to ChigueroSNews.com and give some clicks and love to my boy Caliones. With all that said, Caliones, are you ready? Take it away. For the no one in attendance, and of course, the no one watching around the world because it's recorded, <laughs> let's get ready for Reggie's. New center. My body, my body is ready. My body is ready. Take it away, Caliones. And uh, I don't even know how many pieces of new we have. There's so many of them, but we're going to be detailing, uh, you know, the different, uh, you know, sales, SMS, and, and things like that. Uh, so we're going to be uh, talking about the Switch, Odyssey, and everything else, you know, in between as well. So 
Nintendo estimates that Mario Odyssey has surpassed 2 million units sold worldwide in its first three days. Uh, remember, the, uh, the game just, just came out on the 27, so they're talking about 27, 28, and 29, and it's already done 2 million units. And this is sold. This is not, like Sony says, like shipped units. It's sold units. So they're talking about sell-through. So a uh, great beginning to the game. And how great has the beginning uh, of the game been? This is actually the fastest selling super mario game ever so uh and this is uh in the u.s so uh super mario odyssey in the u.s has sold more than 1.1 million units alone so you can imagine how much more is sold everywhere else um so the game it's um over a million people in the u.s already playing the game the game has an average of 97 on metacritic uh 43 perfect scores um uh, and it's currently tied for you know, with Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild as the highest rated game of the year. So, well, it's the uh, highest rated. If Metacritic put it number one to clarify. Even though both of them have a 97, the throughput of the perfect scores were higher on Mario Odyssey. So, to clarify, even though it's tied, Mario Odyssey did become the highest rated game in Metacritic. So that is a a, a great award after Zelda: Breath of the Wild. You didn't know that you, Nintendo could have another game hitting 97. But anyway, keep going, Kalyon. Yeah, and, uh, and the way that they use uh, they use an aggregator uh, where you know, some review sites uh, weight way more, more than yep. others. Yep. Uh, so that way, uh, that, that's how they uh, totaled it. But uh, continuing with this, and we're t still talking about sales, and this is the Nintendo Switch, the system. It has sold more than 7.6 million units as of September 2017. So that means... By the end of September, it's already sold 7.6. We're already in November, so October hasn't even been counted yet. So we don't know how many it sold, uh, but uh, we have a more, you know, more or less a pretty good indication uh, of how many it sold because over in Japan this past week, the Nintendo Switch sold 126,000 Nintendo Switch units alone. And it sold, like I said, 1.1 in the U.S., in Japan, Super Mario Odyssey sold 462,000 copies, being making it the number one game uh, in Japan. So because of all of this, uh, Nintendo has raised their forecast uh, from 14 million units sold by the end of the fiscal year to 17 million units sold. And well, not by, by the end of fiscal year, by the end of April. Uh, by or by April, so uh, well, actually, yes, the end of the fiscal year, which ends on March 31st. So, what do you say to all of this, Dantes? Let's repackage this new story. Let's start with the Mario Odyssey story. I am so freaking happy that Mario Odyssey has sold two million units, and here's why I'm so happy because we've been talking about loot boxes and bullshit like that in the last couple of weeks, and Mario Odyssey is showing the power of the plumber. Well, he's not a plumber anymore. Carpenter. Well, I don't know what he is anymore. Anyway, whatever he is now. He's retired. He's that's retired. What he is. He's a retired plumber and carpenter. Uh, so, but aside from that, this shows the power of the single-player game. And the beauty about it is, if you think about it, Nintendo, Mario Odyssey is still a great game, great, greatly uh, uh, developed. The gameplay is awesome, but it's not an expensive game. It, you account, I'll bet you $100 that Horizon Zero Dawn has sold around 4 million units. And Odyssey sold 2 million units. I'll bet you that Nintendo has gained more profit with those 2 million units sold than what Horizon has with the 4 million. And why I say that is because Nintendo makes fun games with fun gameplay, but they don't have to drop the bank in making those games. They don't have to have the highest end graphics. And to clarify, I love high end graphics. I love playing games like The Last of Us and, and, and Horizon Zero Dawn, to clarify. But we have to give credit where credit is due. The difference in sales is different when you develop a game like Mario Odyssey compared when you develop a game like The Last of Us 2. So Sony, to make a huge profit on The Last of Us 2, is going to have to sell more than what Mario Odyssey is, is selling. That is a fact. And you have to give credit credit is due. So, again, it just shows you, and I'm saying all this. Why I'm saying all this is because AAA developers or publishers, you don't have to give us the best grass-looking grass, the best-looking hair, the best-looking beers. No. You don't need to. Give us a fun, fun game with great gameplay, and people will buy the game. And the reason I'm saying all this is because the gaming industry has become too expensive. So I'm sorry about that going to that soapbox, but I'm really happy that Mario Odyssey has sold 2 million 
units already. 1.1 in the U.S. and already 400,000 in Japan. Big numbers. And also, even though we didn't include it in the Get In, Get Out podcast, they were also the fastest selling in Europe uh, all-time Mario game. So it's off to a, a great start. And I believe this game will have legs. I believe that every person who keeps buying the Switch going now and forward will buy two games. They will buy Breath of the Wild and they will buy Mario Odyssey. So that means that Mario Odyssey, I could foresee going over the magic 10 million mark. To me, to me, if you sell 1 million, you had a hit. If you sell, sell over a 10 million mark, you have a blockbuster, right? And I think okay. Mario Odyssey will get there with no issues. So let me go ahead and ask you this. Okay, so Nintendo's forecasting to sell 17 million Switch units by April, which is you know by the end of uh, of March on March 31st. So if Nintendo sells those 17 million Switch units, how many Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wilds and how many Super Mario Odyssey games will be sold alongside those units? So the attach rate is pretty good. So I would I don't think uh, they will sell by the 17 million the 17 million unit mark. They won't sell 10. I would say the attach rate will, as you grow the, the market, the attach rate will uh, expand the range. What I mean with that is that, again, like Sony, Sony has over close to 68 million, well, they said 17, um, 67 shipped. But their attach rate sucks because, again, people buy the console, they start buying different games. And Nintendo is giving enough priority, in my opinion, with third-party support and all the indies that they have, that some people are not going to buy Zelda and Mario one-to-one, -one, right? We have to clarify. But there, if there's a game that is could get close to being one-to-one, -one, it's going to be Mario. Everybody buys Mario when you buy a Nintendo console, right? Zelda, even though it's, there's a lot of hardcore fans, Zelda has never been a huge blockbuster like Mario. That is the pure truth. Even Skyward Sword, Sword sold really poorly. This Breath of the Wild did give life to Zelda, and seeing that close to 5 million units sold for Zelda Breath of the Wild makes me happy, to clarify, because we haven't been a Zelda that sold that much in a long, long time. To me, the last blockbuster Zelda game was Ocarina of Time, but you're talking about one of the biggest games of all time, so that makes sense why that is the biggest. So to me, Odyssey has the highest chance to get to 10, maybe, by the time 17 hits, uh, a million sold for the Switch. But Zelda, I was think it will stay around the 6 to 7 million mark to me, lifetime sales. But I could be wrong because I've been wrong in a lot of the sales forecasts with this machine. This machine has been selling way better than I expected. I still stand with my prediction that it's going to end up selling around 70 to 80 million units of a console. But it's still off to a great start. It's already halfway through the Wii U sales total. For, uh, for the history of the Wii U, and we, we're not even hit the first year mark. And we are going to do another podcast because I know we had that discussion in Forcing Units on Life with Colin Moriarty's tweet. So we are going to compare. We're going to go back and compare the first year sales of the PS4 against the PS, uh, again, the first year sales of the Switch to kind of give a range and see how both consoles are doing. They're both doing great, to clarify. But we just want to compare and see if in reality the Switch is the, the success that a lot of people say, which I that's me included. I do believe that the Switch has been a success just because of the reason how Nintendo was able to bounce back after the, the, the I would say, the, <laughs> the bad Wii U uh, sales. So this is good numbers all around. Now to go with the other ones, 7.2, great numbers. And then the last one, Japanese sales numbers, they look great. And then expanding the forecast to 17 million by uh, the end of physical year. Uh, that is, Nintendo is really aggressive. We'll see if they hit it. I am not just so sure. I, I am assuming 13 to 14 million by the end of the physical years. But we'll know because Nintendo does give the numbers. It's not like Microsoft or Sony that sometimes hide those numbers. So Nintendo does give the numbers. So hopefully by March we'll know. But my prediction is going to be around 13 to 14 million ship for Nintendo and for the Switch. Anything to yeah. add, Kaliane? Well, uh, I, I just need, I need to clarify something because I wasn't exactly clear, but okay, so Nintendo, their forecast was to sell 10 million Nintendo Switch units this fiscal year, and this doesn't count the launch of the Switch because the Switch launched on March 3rd, so anything that they sold from March 3rd over to March 31st, that's for the previous year, so it doesn't count towards this fiscal year, so uh, they raised it from 10 million, which was their prediction, up to 40 million, which was their estimate, which is their estimate now, and and to those 40 million, you add the 
2.76 million that they've already sold and that's where you come up to almost like 17 million so so that's how the other yeah, numbers work out also uh you were saying about Zelda that you believe that it's you know, more or less going to stay at around like six to seven million copies uh you know sold uh for its lifetime but there is something else that is probably going to push it and have even, even more people buying the game and it's because nintendo for black friday good said way they, good no no wait i want yeah. i want to give you credit <laughs> Good fucking segue. We're, you're, we're learning how to do fucking podcasts, but keep going, Kelly. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, the Nintendo announced that for Black Friday, they're going to have the Zelda Switch Explorers Edition, uh, which is going to be the game. It's going to give you uh, a, a booklet, which is like 88 pages long, and it's going to give you the map uh, of the game. And you know, well, the, the booklet is uh, 100 pages, Explorer's Guide, with a two-sided map as well for 59.99 so yeah they're i guess they're starting to you know make the uh, those packages and make it more enticing for people to go ahead and pick it up again so or if people that are already own it uh can i mean can certainly go back and, and try to get the game so in my case i'm probably going to try to get this one in and sell the other copy or because we have two nintendo switch units maybe keep the other one and and get this one as well but it looks really enticing for only 59.99 you get the game you get the 100 page explorer's guide plus the two-sided map so uh, do you think this is going to help uh, sell, sell even more units than those you predicted? Uh, it could. It could. I, I'm not denying that. I could get like like collectors people like like myself, right? I, I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to hold off, even though I would love to own that book. But some sucker is going to sell it in eBay at some point. So I'll buy the book separately, maybe, just to stay away from buying the game again. <laughs> because I have the big collector's edition right there. If you guys can see it in the back. I did buy the big collector edition that came with the with the with the traveling case and you know and all that stuff. So I like I love collector's edition more for my favorite franchise. The only collector edition that I fucked up and after that I said I ain't doing it again is I bought the order 1886 86 collector's edition. I ain't doing that shit again. <laughs> and the hype in that game was supposed to be good and they turned out to be a a big turd. But anyway, aside from that. It's still easy plat, just to clarify. But aside from that, <laughs> uh, it's, it, I think it could entice. It will help with the sales, but I'm not going back with my prediction. I think around 7 million units for sell that. It's still great, to clarify. It's still great. And I may be wrong. Hey, hey, if they sell over 10, that would be awesome. That goes you into blockbuster numbers, right? And Nintendo having two blockbusters, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, again, you have the two highest rated games this year. Right, so and I'm oh, honestly I'm hoping that Cineblade can rekindle the magic and get another ninety like the original did. So that's my hope. But we'll see. It, it's it's a great collector collector's edition to clarify. So yeah. So I mean I'm in, uh, and they have another ace up their sleeve, and, and that's because uh, by the end of this year they're going to release their second DLC for uh, Breath of the Wild. So maybe they'll do like the complete package or something where they're going to have all the DLC, the game and everything else. So, so that could be another one that eventually they can release uh, to try to push for more sales of the game. But e either way, uh, like, like we have stated previously, Nintendo said that all they needed was to sell 2 million uh, you know, games to break even. So anything else is gravy. So they're just, uh, this is just pure profit for them. Uh, but uh, moving along, we have also... And you know, Nintendo stating that their digital sales are the the highest they've been uh, in their you know, six month period. So uh, this is another one, and the digital sales are not really counted towards the game uh, sales that we've uh, stated. So uh, when it comes to the 1.1 sold for Super Mario Odyssey, and when it comes to the the 400 and uh, 60, over 60, you know, 460,000 for Japan, uh, those are physical copies of the game. It's not digital copies. So those are gonna. I mean, those numbers can climb even higher. Uh, because of those so they have stated that uh, for this year uh, they've already I mean they estimate uh, around like 20, 22.8 billion yens uh, in, in pure profit from those so that's um, I mean something else that they're really pushing towards and you know the switch it really you know uh, bowers itself for something like that because it's portable you may not be wanting to carry so many uh, cartridges and, and games and you may want to do the uh, the download instead, so you can have all of those uh, concentrated there. So uh, I, I I would say I'm not surprised because a lot of the indie games are digital only. So I mean that it just makes sense when you have more digital games. 
or excuse me, more indie games in your console, a lot of people are going to be buying more digital. So I, I'm not surprised. I just don't think that number is as big for the first party games. I believe that a lot of people are buying those games physical. You have to account. Remember that the Switch only has 32 gigs of, of, of storage. So if you're like me, aside that I love physical, I'm not going to buy digital. But if you're like me, I'm not going to be downloading 30 nine or, or excuse me 10 gigs of in games with the big games right so i prefer having the physical at least reducing helping me reduce the 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 amount of storage i even though i did buy a 200 gig sd card but i want to leave those that sd card for those indie games that i like like again it's not an indie game but i, I bought sonic mania uh i bought um a sever uh i downloaded the octo octopad uh demo uh, I am planning to buy a golf story once my 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 uh, backlog reduces a little bit. So and there's other games that I'm interested to download. It's just I'm not downloading yet because admittedly, oh, I forgot. I also down bought, bought uh, F Zero Clone RFX Max, and I also bought uh, Snipper Clips, who is a fun game to play with another person. A lot of people give shit that that game is is shit, but. It is a fun game to play with other, and I think the expansion of Snipper Clips is going to be good to own if you want to get more out of it. So my point is I have bought digital games, but I want to keep it more for those downloadable made games specifically, not the big AAA games. So. Well, and I mean, something to talk about is that, uh, yes, uh, you're going to require additional Set space way. when it comes to, <laughs> yep, to those games, but uh, now we're having problems where even physical games are requiring you to have you know, big downloads for them. So uh, we have two of them, um, you know, WWE 2K18 and LA Noir. Uh, the day stated that you know, for uh, 2K18, uh, it requires a 24 gigabyte download for the physical version. This is the physical version of the game. So even if you get the physical version, it requires an additional 24 gigs. Uh, and the LA Noir game, it requires an additional 14 gigabytes of uh, download for your physical or 32 gigs total uh, for the digital. So uh, is it something that is uh, getting carried away or, or, or how do you feel about this, Dantes? I mean, we already talked about this. We even had our Numa's Nintendo discussion if Nintendo did the right thing by only pulling 32 gigs of flash memory, right? But if now if you think about it, what other solution would you have? I mean, if they would have put 200 flash memory, the system would have cost way more. And I think 200 is not even enough now. And your 200 SD card is not going to be enough when you buy these games and, and you still have to download 14 and 50 gigs. I haven't experienced that yet because, I again, I the third-party games, I only bought a couple and I've been buying more indies. And the only game that I bought and I think doesn't need a download is Skyrim for the Switch. I am not planning to buy L.A. Noire or Doom because L.A. Noire already platted it on the PS4, so I already enjoy everything that that game had to offer. And Doom doesn't interest me because it's not my type of game. But that doesn't mean that a lot of people are going to enjoy that. Like my friend who's who's pumped for Doom and he's going to buy it. And he's going to find out that he needs to down, buy an SD card. I haven't told him that. So I need to, to make, give him a heads up that he needs to start looking for an SD card if he starts buying those third-party games. So, I mean, you have to do it. Hopefully, the, the, the SD cards will go down in price faster because we need a solution, Kalyan. I think we need a solution. And to me, the best solution... To me, Nintendo, if you listen to me, this is my idea. Let us connect a uh, external hard drive to the to the dock, right? So when you go in dock your game, you can you can transfer and change games that you want to take on the go and play. So let me e give an example. Then you can connect a one terabyte hard drive. You can download all the games that you want. You can tra start transferring to your dock. Oh, I'm taking a trip. Let me dock it a minute. Let me delete this game from my SD card and put this game on my SD card. And then I can take it on the road, these five games or whatever. And then you can have a little bit of, 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 of playing with your storage, kind of like physical. But just let us connect because you, you, are, you have USB connection. You can connect how the Switch dock is set up at external hard drive. So I would think that the solution for Nintendo and for the future to me is allowing us to connect any type of external hard drive. So. Yeah, I mean, the, the dock already comes with three different USB, uh, you know, uh, connectors on there. So it has, you know, two on the outside, one on the inside. So it already has three of them. So, and especially the one on the inside, uh, you can already, you know, like put it basically so you can, put a, uh, you can a, a connect stick. it on there. Yeah, and yeah. In the inside. So if you want to make it look nice, you can buy one of the one terabyte 
uh, sticks just connected yeah. there, and you could again, you don't have to even show the hard drive. That would be a, a elegant solution, in my opinion. Okay, and also uh, I have another one where okay, so uh, you've already bought like cases. You know, for some people they already bought uh, cases, and those cases they come with like the the small boxes where you have uh, like the. Uh, let me go ahead and show you on here. Uh, so, you know, for example, uh, this is the uh, the you know, Splatoon 2 case. On the inside, uh, you have the switch. Then underneath the switch, if you take it out, uh, you have the the game cases on here. So you can store the game, and if you actually pay attention uh, and you check the uh, the game cases, it actually has one where you can put micro SD cards on the inside, and uh, you can save them right there. So okay, so what this tells you, they already know. Nintendo knows that uh, more than likely you're gonna have uh, maybe one or more than one uh, SD card that you're gonna be using. So why not? If you already got a game case for a Nintendo Switch, and you know the uh, the game cartridges are so small that they they don't really take that much space. I mean, you have so much space on the inside that it this is all the, the only thing that you have. So why not have those companies? For example, uh, let's say uh, LA Noir. Uh, it for you know to have it come with a game and then come with an, a, a 16 gigabyte micro SD card as well inside of it. So that way, if you want to. Uh, you can put the SD card with the game and play the game. That way you don't have to worry about doing any downloads or anything like that. Or uh, if you want to, you can either download it from the internet or you can transfer it from the SD card to you know the memory on the inside of the system or to another uh, card. So uh, how much do you think, um, let's say Nintendo would pay if they bought uh, 16 gigabyte uh, SD cards, uh, micro SD cards or 32 gigabytes micro SD cards in bulk um, you know, buying one, two, three, four millions, or even more so at a time, they would probably be paying like pennies uh, in a dollar, right? So a 32 gigabyte uh, micro SD card is probably going to cost them like 10 to 15 cents um, or being conservative, let's say a dollar, uh, you know, to like, keep it conservative. So that's only one dollar for a 32 gigabyte SD card. You include that on the package itself where you have plenty of space and um, you don't have to worry about additional downloads uh, or being you know, having to wait until you download uh, X amount of information from a game just so you can start playing it. Uh, so out of the box, you can insert the game, micro SD on the system, and you and it's ready to go. So I believe this that's going to be something that would help out, and also it's going to help out against uh, having to you know buy uh, you know for the for the consumer itself having to go out and buying you know like a. a bigger cards to you know put those even though they're not really that expensive but that way it's going to help so you can play it out of the box so uh what about a concept like that dantes mm, i guess it could work uh my only concern would be if you lose those 16 gig cards or 32 gigs xd cards can you if they're connected between the 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 switch card and, and it and you have your safe there i don't know uh, it could work. I think it could work. Uh, it could be a solution for sure that, that the vendors, third-party vendors, include a small 32 gig SD card. I don't know if they're gonna do it because again, it's all about profit margins, right? So even though it's, it could be a dollar per SD card, they're not gonna they're not gonna make it, right? So I don't know. It could be. A, there's a, it's a solution. I'm not gonna deny that it's a possible solution. It could work out. It's just depending on how you implement. So. Yeah, I mean, but it's, it's going to be very cost effective because it's not, I mean, it's not really going to cost uh, that much. And if Nintendo's already providing uh, the game so they can, you know, like uh, basically record the other uh, game into uh, the cartridge itself, then they can go ahead and provide those as well. So uh, I'm just thinking, you know, trying to see if, you know, that's another way that they can do it. Yeah, agree. But, agree. Yeah. I mean, we have to do something for sure. Things are going to get bigger and bigger for sure. So anyway. Okay, so uh, go ahead and uh, moving along. So Nintendo discusses their lessons that they learned about the, uh, the Wii U launch, also their vision for the Switch Online, and more. So, you know, basically it was an interview uh, with you know, Reggie uh, Fisame, and he was talking about the problems uh, on the Switch. So this is you know, some of the conversation where he addressed um, why, you know, the, about the, uh, the Wii U launch, that he didn't have a big exclusive like, you know, Zelda or Mario game. Uh, at the beginning of the launch, uh, also they talked about Switch Online and the plans for next year uh, as it becomes a paid service. Uh, so something that he said on here, he said, um, 
I'm not going to tell you tell you exactly what it's going to look like. We'll share more about that next year. But what I can tell you is that our vision is to have a robust online environment that not only provides the mechanism for you to have your multiplayer experiences and matchmaking, uh, those elements are minimum. Our goal is to provide that extra Nintendo twist, and that's what makes our company historically so effective. We don't do things the same way everyone else does. We rest being different. We see that difference as an element that makes us more compelling to the consumer. And so having that differentiated experience is what we are focused on and will unveil more next year as we're closer to the launch of the service. Uh, so, yeah, it's um, uh, they had uh, you know, he had additional things uh, that he talked about. Uh, mentioning virtual reality, importance of third party, and also yeah, if you guys uh, want to read more, uh, you can go ahead and go over to you know Forbes.com, which you know was the other one that interviewed. So you know, pretty uh, good read, and I would you know highly recommend it. But uh, what what would you say about uh, you know Reggie's point about the launch of the Wii U if it struggled because it didn't have that big exclusive at the beginning, and about the the Switch Online? Uh, so Reggie, I mean. There have been many articles about Nintendo talking about what they learn about the online. You know, sometimes what I feel, Kali, honest, is I feel that it's not so much about the lessons learned. It's about having a good product to to sell, right? And the Switch is a good product. The Switch is versatile. The Switch, you can play it as a console. You can take it home, portable. That's the selling point of the system. It's just having a good product to sell. It's not so much that we do it online different. Do we have the OS faster? I don't agree with any of that. I think that, honestly, if you ask me, the biggest lessons learned that Nintendo did is just learn how to freaking promote their system. That is the truth, right? They're doing a stellar job promoting the system this time, selling the concept. People understand the concept. People are not confused if it's a add-on to the Wii or what is this Wii U or X, Y, and Z. That is, that is to me, a simple lesson that they learn. I don't think they have learned that many other lessons. The online is still not awesome. They're still learning that. Uh, they're still having some arcade, archaic ways of thinking, like letting people stream their games, not allowing them to promote their games when they stream. Uh, I think they still haven't done uh, cloud savings, which bothers me and, and really bothers me, honestly. Uh, so there are things that Nintendo still has not learned. They're still slow pace. So to me, it's all about having the right product, having the good concept, and be able to promote and sell that concept. Yeah. And I mean, with the cloud saving, I, I still hope that that's going to come with the uh, the Switch Online, uh, the paid online. So hopefully that's going to be coming uh, pretty soon. But yeah, I get a feeling that uh, they're just waiting for the holiday season to you know pass by. And now and then once, uh, you know, like 2018 starts in January, they're probably going to have like a big Nintendo Direct. And that's when they're going to do their big showcase with, with all of those things. So, but you know, e either way, um, Nintendo is not only looking at the, the Switch itself, but they are talking about uh, releasing more than likely two to three smartphones apps annually. So, uh, the one that's going to be coming out on, you know, this month or at the end of this month, or it's going to be the, uh, the Animal Crossing, uh, uh, I think the Animal Crossing Camp something i forgot the app but uh, and i have it actually uh yeah, the application did release in australia and i went ahead and downloaded the apk file so i do have the application on on the phone i just forgot the name uh but yeah that's one that is going to be releasing worldwide by the end of this month um they also talked about you know super mario run where it didn't really meet their expectations you know sales wise but uh they also have you know um even though it's not their own ip per se you know pokemon go we took the world by storm, and even Fire Emblem uh, Heroes, which is doing a, you know great uh, sales wise. So you know, they're turning a profit on those. So if they've been kind of hit or miss, especially with uh, Mitomo. Uh, and I guess you can also consider the uh, the Nintendo Switch Online as another app as well. So uh, when they when when they say applications, it's not necessarily games, uh, but it could be other things as well. They also have the uh, the parental control app, uh, which is another one that they release. So they do have a, a couple of applications that they release, and uh, hopefully uh, those are going to be tying in with the Switch, and they're going to continue to doing, you know, to releasing games uh, that tie in with big releases as well. So uh, we'll see. So uh, what do you see uh, in the future for Nintendo when it comes to apps? Uh, they they did mention that they learn a lot from the Mario Run. I still haven't uh, bought that app. That's funny, right? I, I would. Think that I will all over this game. Yeah, and they had it on sale for four nine nine. Yeah, I just, I just, it's just, 
I just don't play my cell phone. I'm like, I'm, when I'm at work, I'm concentrated at work. I don't want to pull a game. I want to get home. I want to play real games. I don't want to play mobile games. That's just me, right? Uh, but for normal users, they may find that attractive, right? Uh, so I think they're learning. They're still learning. But what I what I see is that what they're learning is that what they're, they're making money is the gacha game. So I truly believe that now what you're going to get is gacha up your wasu. That's what you're going to get from Nintendo. They have to make that money, man. So you know what I'm saying. Uh, hey, at Nintendo, as long as you don't bring it to consoles, you can do all the catchy games that you want to do on your mobile. Maybe that way you can keep it away, that bullshit away from consoles. <laughs> but uh, and they have, uh, they also released some data uh, on their, uh, I guess, yeah, their, you know, uh, sales retold, but they also have information about how people play the Switch, you know, their trends, uh, if they prefer to play docked versus undocked, and this covered Japan, the U.S., and Europe. So, uh, basically, and this is, um, you know, more so the averages. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk in holes and not, you know, in 17 points something, something, you know, something like that. So, you know, just to break it down, break it down more evenly. So, 20% of the people play, uh, you know, strictly in dock mode. 30% of the people play fully on dock, and 50% of the people play in both of the modes. Uh, you know, uh, almost equally. So the, what does that tell you? It tells you that, yes, uh, even though people uh, do appreciate the system as, uh, you know, playing it in duck mode, but you also have 30% of the players that play it strictly or, you know, specifically as undocked. So it, it is this uh, docked, undocked hybrid type of, you know, game system that is actually pushing for these sales. So um, with the Switch, uh, Nintendo is appeasing the players that like to play on the couch versus the players you know that like to take on the go and it's um i mean a, pre a pretty interesting uh this you know they're playing trends on um, gameplay trends with how they play so uh does the chart tell you anything about this honestly I'm, I'm more surprised i thought that the people were using the system more uh portable mode i guess you could put it that way right and there's a good chunk of people who are playing it just in console type i'm one included like i play it way more uh, console type like I cannot play Mario Odyssey uh, on the go I just cannot because when you dock that game and that game looks so great and so awesome it's just it, I just feel like the small screen the 720 screen just don't doesn't give that game enough justice right so I have completely not play Mario Odyssey at all portable right but there's games even though the game looks great like Mario and Rabbits uh uh, that game to me sounds more of a portable game, right? Because it's more, you can play it in small chunks. It's more of a strategy game. You don't need to be looking at the whole map to find stuff. It's more like a strategy, small map, and you're trying to figure out what to do. That game, I never have minded to play portable. I played it a lot more, it's mostly portable because I can be, you know, as, 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 as the family watches TV, I can be, you know, playing the game or X, Y, and Z. And myself watching a show, I can be playing the game too. So there's just games that are perfectly made for portable. It's just Mario Odyssey to me is not one of them at all. But even that said, I mean, if, I, if I'm on a bind and I'm not doing a, a trip, then... Yeah, I mean, that's fine. I, I would take Mario Odyssey with me. So I think, again, it just shows you how good, uh, versatile the system is. But uh, I am, uh, admittedly, I'm a little bit surprised of how high the numbers are for console use. So. Yeah, uh, and I mean, as you know, uh, since I've been doing the uh, the streaming Wednesdays, I've been playing uh, mostly Splatoon 2 because, you know, to me, it's the best multiplayer game on the system. But that one I've been playing is strictly on dark mode. And that's because I really like using the pro controller with the game and you know, especially with the gyro controls and, and all of it. So it, for me, it's a most, uh, especially when it, com when it comes to a competitive game. But yes, I, Mario and Rabbids, uh, Kingdom Battle, I enjoy playing it on, on handheld mode. Even, even Mario, actually, I mean, if you try it out, it, it's pretty good you know, playing it on, on handheld mode, even though I do uh, prefer uh, you know, playing it on the TV. Uh, Breath of the Wild is another one that I like to play dog. Uh, but it's because those, you know, like high, you know, a big scale type of games that you just want to like sit down, enjoy and appreciate this, the world itself uh, is better for that. But then uh, there's a lot of other games that I like to you know, basically strictly play, uh, play on dog. I mean, on handheld mode. So, yeah, that's my preference on those. Yep, I agree. I agree. OK, and uh, we have additional news. So Nintendo, once again, they're stating. 
that they plan to resume production on the Nest Mini uh, in 2018. Uh, they repeated it during the fin you know, financial briefing, and that's one of the things that they like to you know touch on. Uh, they stated that they uh, the Super NES uh, Classic Edition has reached a sell through of two million units worldwide. <laughs> So that's uh, two million Super NES minis that have been sold already. Uh, so you know they're waiting to you know continue to release more of those. So they're going to be trickling in. But yeah, the NES mini, yes, it will be coming in 2018. They have reconfirmed it, uh, and it's probably going to be around summertime. So you can look forward to it. So great news. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're great news. I mean, it's finally getting a mini. It's finally good because. Again, I think the Nintendo NES Mini, the original, was underdeveloped. Well, not underdeveloped, I'm sorry. It's underproduced, right? So there was enough copies, and the scalpers just abused the system. I'm just happy that we can finally see if we can reduce the damn scalpers from doing this bullshit, right? Uh, but Nintendo has a gold mine here with the NES and the Super NES Mini. Just take advantage of it. Sell those fuckers up the wazoo. You got a Switch, you got a Mini, and you got a Super Mini. Dude. Sell that shit and make that money. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and you cannot really see it. So if you go to places like eBay, Craigslist, and those, uh, this, the Super NES Mini, uh, it's it's actually uh, ninety dollars. So it's not uh, sixty like the NES Mini. It's ninety. Uh, but uh, you can actually see that the price itself is lower. So the you know the system itself has been selling on average for maybe like one hundred and forty to a hundred. Uh, and 60 uh, where the mini has been upwards of like $250. So that's, I mean, how you can really see the difference in between uh, both of them. And uh, actually, I, I should clarify the, uh, I said $90, but the Super NES Classic Edition, it is $80. So $20 more than the NES mini, but it's been selling close to $100 less uh, by, you know, the scalpers and, and those other people. So that tells you how they know that the system is more readily available and they haven't been selling it that much because they want to sell through it and make sure they make a profit before everybody else gets it and there's no demand for them. But um, going from people that, I mean, from you know, a system that everybody is embracing and buying and getting to a company that is not yet ready to embrace the Switch, uh, EA stated that they are in no rush to make more video games for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, basically, and this is coming from the... Uh, uh, the Wall Street Journal, uh, Takashi Mochizuki, he reported that uh, Electronic Arts is waiting until Nintendo's new Switch has been on the market a full year before deciding whether to release more games for it besides FIFA 18. Uh, that's what the financial chief, uh, Blake uh, Jor you know, Jorgensen, uh, told the Wall Street Journal. So even though the Switch is selling like crazy, even though games are selling like crazy, even though there's been a lot of reports about third-party games selling great, about Mia Bethesda embracing it, and other companies as well. But EA once again is saying that they just want to, you know, like sit back and see how it does for its first year before they decide to do anything on it. So, does EA need anything else to convince them, or at this point should we just disregard them completely and say, you know what, EA, uh, forget you on the Switch. Uh, we're just gonna look over, you know, look forward to other games from other third-party developers. I was. I would say forget about EA, honestly. That's, that's that, that that boat has sailed. Uh, I think EA, if whatever EA is waiting, yeah, I think EA is waiting on the Nintendo full infrastructure of the online game so they can see if they can sell you that online loot box, baby. That's what EA is looking for. So to me, what they're waiting for is to see what is the online infrastructure of the of Nintendo so they can pull the few uh, full features. I know with FIFA, there were some features out of the game. So to me, that's what they're they're waiting for, in my opinion. Yeah, and in I mean, in contrast to what they uh, what EA said, uh, on the other side, we had Koei Tecmo, uh, Joichi Eikawa. He stated that uh, we bet big on the Switch as a game changer, so we began making games before the Switch launch. But many software companies showed reluctance in releasing Switch games before they witnessed the current success. So this is you know you can basically take it as a direct jab to companies like EA and even Capcom. Uh, that they have shown reluctance on re on supporting the Switch, uh, so they um, I guess they bet on it, and they actually 
are reaping the profits from it. So hopefully other companies are going to see. And we know that you know games, uh, they take time to develop, to develop. It's not something that they can go ahead and have them ready right away. And I know after the Wii U uh, debacle, uh, you know, companies were even more so reluctant to support a Nintendo system. But at this point, I don't think you need any more indication to know, yes, uh, we should be making you know, games for the Switch. Um, I think the, in these you know, like seven, eight months that it's been on the market, they should already know if it's going to be a success or not. So um, yeah, that's why I don't really agree with with EA, with them saying that they need to wait a year. I think it's been more than enough what has already happened. And I'm glad companies like Koei, Tecmo, uh, they are supporting it and they will continue to support it. Uh, I agree. I mean, there, I don't know what more data the, the developers want unless your game is to like just cannot run it on the Switch, right? Uh, but I think those games are few and far between, so I don't th I don't think they need enough data. I think Japanese developers are gonna embrace this system. You see the Japanese sales numbers. You're gonna get a lot of Japanese games in this system, and for me, that is great. I don't mind that at all if we get all those good old RPGs on this system. So, hey, we don't need EA. I think there's gonna be en enough developers here. They're gonna make good games, and as long as Nintendo keep giving you gems like. Uh, Mario Odyssey and Breath of the Wild. It's all good. Okay, well, uh, but uh, you know, we're basically more so finished with the art news. Uh, this is more so like game announcements. So uh, Rocket League has been confirmed to be coming to the Nintendo Switch on November 14th. So this reconfirms that November is the big month for third-party uh, releases. So uh, you have Rocket League. You already have Skyrim. You have Doom. You have L.A. Noir. Uh, you have, uh, you know, Rhyme is going to be coming out as well. So uh, big releases for the month, uh, mostly third-party games. Uh, there's no big Nintendo game uh, coming out. And so I'm glad uh, Nintendo, even though it's had a, a really big year with releases, and we still have Xenoblade Chronicles 2 on December 1st, but they actually left November to, you know, for third-party developers so they can go ahead and sell those. So that shows an appreciation from Nintendo and uh, for them supporting the third parties and, and and telling them that they really do want them to be on the system and be successful. So uh, that tells you a lot. So uh, aside from Rocket League, uh, we also have Owl Boy, uh, which is going to be coming to the Nintendo Switch on February 13th. Uh, then we have uh, Nikali's, uh, Doetmu, and Lizard Cube uh, team. Uh, they will be publishing uh, Wonder Boy, the Dragon's Tail Trapped at Retail. So uh, that game is going to be brought over to Retail. And it's, it's going to be, uh, I'll, I'll throw a bone saying that it's going to be for the Switch and PS4, uh, but they'll, they will be uh, producing a physical copy of the game. And we have Zen Studios Pinball FX3 will be coming to the Nintendo Switch, and it's going to be coming on November 14th as well. So on the same day, you're going to have Rocket League and Pinball FX, uh, two completely different games, but two games that a lot of people are really going to have uh, love to have. So with these, uh, we already conclude our news, so we can go ahead and move over to the games that we'll be releasing this week. Woo! That was a lot of news, Caliones. But if I wanted to know the game is coming out to the Nintendo Switch, which is our favorite store. Shigeru's Mini Market. Soon <laughs> to be <laughs> Supermarket. Soon to but, be uh, Supermarket. <laughs> But yes, uh, you know, this game, uh, this week we have you know some interesting releases. Uh, I already counted them, and I forgot how many of those were going to come out. But uh, we have eight, nine, ten, eleven games uh, coming out this week. So they are King Oddball. Uh, we have Perception, Monster Jam, Crush It. Uh, we also have Monopoly uh, for the Switch. Our uh, Cartoon Network Battle Crashers, Wills of Aurelia. Super Beat Sports, Sparkle 2 Evo, Morphite, Chess Ultra, Neo Geo's Art of Fighting 3. And so that makes 11 games uh, from those. Uh, you know, I already said on the last podcast, I'm a big uh, chess fan. So uh, Chess Ultra is going to be one of those games that I'm going to be uh, picking up. Also, uh, for our Chigero News website, uh, we're going to do, be doing a review for more fights, so look forward to our review of the game. And that one, um, it seems like it's probably going to be uh, the game that I'm going to be preferring because it looks like a mixture of um, Metroid and uh, No Man's Sky. So any games that you're looking forward to, Dantes? 
Uh, not really, <laughs> but but it's all good if you're happy with uh, chess yeah. master or whatever it's called. Uh, yeah, so still, still, uh, uh, Mario Odyssey is still taking all your time, so yeah, you can't yeah, really think yeah, of anything yeah. else. That's gonna be, that's gonna be a while. So, uh, hey, hey, uh, it's all good. I'm good. I'm good to go. Uh, quickly, uh, I what I wanted to say for the people out there. I was just checking the our Facebook page. One person was asking if the Facebook page is the right place to contact us for. For the podcast, yes, you can contact us on our Facebook page. You can leave messages and 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 get any questions you want answered, anything that you want from us. We're more than happy to discuss it. Also, a little bit of a house cleaning quickly. Uh, Caliones came up with a great idea last night as he was uh, uh, playing with the peeps, uh, doing the 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 uh, Splatoon 2 stream like he does every Wednesday, 9:30 Eastern time. So join join Caliones always. He, uh, he's going to develop a tournament. He's going to develop a Splatoon tournament. So if you think you're a great Splatoon player, please let, leave us a comment right here in this video or leave us a Facebook page or come next Wednesday to join the bracket to see the play. And when the goal of this is that if we get to 100 subscribers, right, I'll put some special. We'll put a, a nice uh, $50 Uh, award for the winner i'll put it that's not that's not a problem 50 dollars award so whoever wins the tournament can get that and do use it for the nintendo switch eShop. we can buy the the points directly to you and then you can use it on the nintendo eShop, and we'll figure that out that's not a problem so just saying get us to 100 subscribers we're close there and then once we get to 100 subscribers the next tournament calion is going to make the splatoon 2 championship and the winner will get 50 dollars so you can buy That sweet ass games on the Nintendo Switch. Anyways, I wanted to finish that little bit of house cleaning. Uh, quickly going to Onuma's Nintendo discussion. This is gonna be short and switch, uh, short and switch, <laughs> short and sweet <laughs> discussion. Because yeah, I got switch in my head. Because uh, today I wanted to keep it simple. Today I wanted to talk. Mario Odyssey is awesome. We all know. A lot of people already beat the game. A lot of people are doing the post content. Kalionis keeps telling me that when, get, when I get to the post content, it's, he really wants to know if I keep Mario Galaxy 2 as my number one Mario game. But aside from that, I was thinking, Nintendo is, is embracing the DLC this generation, right? They, they, they are doing an expansion pack for Zelda coming still this year, supposedly by Nintendo, keep saying that it's coming out this year. But I wanted to ask, or I would like ask to ask Kalionis what type of expansion pack we would see for for the switch or for mario odyssey and i want to bring an example right uh on the new super mario brothers game for the wii u which that game i like way more than the new super mario brothers for the wii uh they did an expansion pack for luigi where all the stages were like hardcore stages where you really have to have your platform and skills to the test and of course your boy dan test got everything in that game too because i was still showing up my skills on platforming uh, and, 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 and doing that Luigi expansion helped change all the stages where you could go through and re you had a real challenge and you even had to beat the stages in like 30 seconds or less if my memory doesn't fail me. So it, it was almost like a speed run going through that expansion pack. So what I believe in looking at in the background uh, as, as Caliones uh, boys, boy plays uh, Nintendo, uh, the Odyssey and playing with the Luigi costume, Uh, I would like to see a Luigi expansion pack for Odyssey where you use Luigi and then you would go to the same worlds, but you would pick new moons, kind of green moons or whatever you want to call it, but with a challenge that you would find special pipes and you would have to go and beat those moons, but like a really hardcore challenge, kind of like what they did with the Luigi expansion for the new Super Mario Brothers Wii U. Just giving an example. That's what I would like to see. Caliones, what type of expansion would you like to see for Mario Odyssey? Well, uh, it's going to be a little bit hard to talk about it without, you know, trying to spoil anything that the game already does have. But yes, uh, I mean, if you add, you know, Luigi as a playable character, if you add, you know, like uh, other characters as well as playable characters, then you can devise, uh, you know, different moons or challenges based on their specific uh, moves. So you know, for, you know, the game world, it's going to be kind of hard to uh, redesign the world itself. But Uh, you can place different moons in different places based on their abilities and, and do it that way. Um, also, uh, you can have uh, you know, additional content when it comes to uh, maybe 
I'm not necessarily like an additional storyline because Mario is not really so much you know, uh, about story. It's more so about gameplay and fun. Uh, so uh, adding additional stages or not stages, but you know, like uh, story elements within those stages uh, would probably be a, a nice uh, way to go about it. Or, or uh, there's something that happens at the end of the game uh, and certain things that you do or, or that you control uh, basing uh, different challenges based on those uh, would be uh, something that we can uh, that they can do as well. Uh, again, I can't really talk in detail, especially with Dantes uh, here, because uh, there's big things that happen uh, towards the end of the game and after the game. So something like that uh, would be very welcome. So um, for those people that have played it, uh, you know what happens at the end of the game you know certain places that you can reach at the end of the game. So they can probably do more of that and paying homage to to other things that Mario has already done in the past. So uh, there's, there's a lot of things that Nintendo can do. Um, they did one with this game itself. So uh, once you finish it, you will know what I'm talking about. Uh, but they can certainly do that for uh, other games. So I'm, I'm just going to leave it that way. But you know, once you finish the game, you will understand that there's a lot of things that Nintendo can do uh, with the game by expanding on on and and tipping the cap you know their cap off to you know to those others. So yeah, that's um, uh, I think they already did it and they had a really good example. It's just part of the game, but you know they can add even more of those of those things. So finish the game, Dantes, and once you do so, uh, we're gonna have another conversation. We'll have it live over here. And well, and hope well, hopefully it'll be live uh, uh, during that uh, broadcast, so we can also get uh, comments from other people and what their experiences with the game and what they think uh, would add to it. So it, it'll be, I think it's going to be really interesting and really exciting to get your input uh, when you do so. Okay, no, that's fine. Uh, we'll do that. Of course, we'll have a review discussion once we beat the game. Of course, I'm taking my sweet ass time. I'm still. I just went through. Uh, what was it called? The Beach World. I forgot the name of the Seaside, Seaside Kingdom, and 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 I'm I'm up to 368 moons. If my memory doesn't fail me, close to that. So I'm taking my sweet ass time, and because I'm exploring, I'm trying to find everything. I, it's just gonna take me longer than other people that just beats the game, right? Because that's my enjoyment with Mario Odyssey is trying to find everything. Like yesterday, I was cursing because I was trying to do the hundred uh, beach balls. Uh, returns in the in the in in, in in seaside. Damn it! That I people said that the jumping the rope was hard, and I did that in like my fourth try doing the hundred jump jump ropes, right? So Caliones, if you want to challenge me, I I did 166 jump ropes. So go ahead, boy. Go ahead and hey, try it uh, out, boy. Anyway. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna ask. Have you looked at the leaderboards when it comes to the jump ropes? Yeah, I was I was high. I was high there because the jump ropes are hard. Have you seen like the the first like five or ten players? No, I no, I haven't seen it. What's the record? Uh, I think last time I saw it, the records was like a little over eleven thousand. No, no way in hell I'm doing eleven thousand jump ropes. I I, I by one hundred and sixty <laughs> something, I was like, oh, this is this sucks. I'm tired of doing. And, and as as you can guess, like the first five or you know or six players were Japanese. So they yeah. were the ones that had those records. Of course, I imagine. <laughs> so, but anyway, that's fun. Again, little challenges there. I did like a hundred and a hundred and three beach ball returns because that one I got pissed. I got there was many times I was like, "This sucks," but I had to get to a hundred because you get twenty to get your first moon, and then you have to get to a hundred to get your second moon. So, so again, I, I did shit like that, and and, and yeah, I'm having fun with the game. I'm having I'm having a great time with the game. I, I, I'm still not there to put up over Mario Galaxy, but Kalyan says to wait. We'll see. I'll, I'm gonna have my final judgment once I beat the game, uh, but. I sh I would love to see an expansion pack for Luigi. That's what I'm saying. Give give some love to my bro Luigi and have some stages uh, properly designed for Luigi. That's the only thing I'm gonna ask. So, anyway, with that said, Caliones, we're done with the show today. We're hitting well, the one-hour um, mark finally. Lately, we always keep going over, yeah. but we're 58 minutes in today. <laughs> I don't want to say uh, one more thing before we go, yeah, and sure. it's that. Uh, the you know Octodad Deadliest Cash uh, has also been confirmed for the Switch and it's going to be coming out on the 9th uh, of this month. So in seven days, uh, you can go ahead and play Octodad. Yeah, I did 100% that game on the PS4. So it's a fun game. I, I It's not that awesome. But a anyway, if you want to kill some time, you're fine. You can do that. Uh, anyway, 
with that said, we're done. We're done, baby. That means that I should be putting some uh, Xenoblade Chronicles music to end this show, right, Kalyon? Let's do that. Yeah, there you go. Oh, I love it. I, I'm, I'm so ready for December 1st. Anyway, thank you, everybody, for joining us at the Get In and Get Out Nintendo Podcast, episode 22, every Saturday, 9.30 Eastern Time. Please remember to subscribe, like, and comment so you can make these two crazy MFs happy. Also remember, if you don't want to see ugly faces, it's all good, it's all good. Because we got a solution for you. Go to SoundCloud and iTunes and download this podcast for free. Rate us over there so you can show us some love. Also, we do have a Facebook page called at Voicing Unison Gaming. And we promise we'll do a better job taking care of the Facebook page. Because me or Carriones haven't gone to the Facebook page in like the last two weeks. Uh, that's what I was doing just now, posting some new uh, stuff. We'll do better. It's just, you know how it is. Life gets in the way. Anyway, aside from that, go to the description box below so you can see the full channel schedule. Please remember, Wednesdays, we have streaming Wednesday at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And of course, Tuesdays, we have Forcing Unison Live, also at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And finally, and on test says, finally, go to ChiguerosNews.com and give some click and love to my boy. Caliones. With all that said, thank you again. Long live Nintendo. See you guys. Have a great one, everyone.